If you're new to Rocket League, then you probably don't struggle with the overall concept of the game. Hit the ball into the opponent's goal. Simple enough, right? But what about the how? If you're a new player, or you've just watched my introduction to Rocket League Esports, then you probably have a good idea of the rules. However, understanding the rules and understanding what's actually going on are two different things. What are the hidden rules that govern how the game really works? If you've watched a pro player, at some point you've probably wondered what on earth they're doing and how they do it. While some of their actions seem pretty self-explanatory, the mechanics behind even basic actions such as flipping and flying aren't so obvious. The physics engine determines what can and can't be done in-game. Experienced players have a good feel for the physics and its constraints, without necessarily understanding the exact details. Once you see how the game really works, what started off as a simple and fun game transforms into a complex, nuanced and truly captivating experience. After peeking behind the curtain, you'll see what really sets Rocket League apart as a game and eSport and you'll be able to appreciate the insane amount of skill required to play this game at a high level. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I started this video asking how Rocket League really works. Well, here's the simplified idea. Rocket League is based on the strategy used by the teams. That strategy will utilize tactics for various situations. Which tactics are effective are based on the mechanics available to a team for a given situation. What mechanics are available are determined by the player's ability and the physics engine of the game itself. It doesn't matter if you got all that. It's just a way of saying we should start with the physics. Don't worry, we'll keep it simple. No equations, just the concepts needed to understand the game and the mechanics we'll be looking at in the next video. Now, and first killer in a dangerous position with full boost. He's gonna push it down. Oh, Second oh, touch oh, from first killer, it sends Rogue on. What really sets Rocket League apart is its deterministic physics engine with independent car and ball physics. It's not as complicated as it sounds, and it's pretty important. In the majority of sports games, you control a virtual agent, a player, you press buttons to instruct the agent to do something with the ball, puck, or frisbee. You move left, the ball moves with your player. Want to pass? Press a button. Want to shoot? Press another button. For a given event such as a shot, successfully scoring is only moderately dependent on you. The actual result is probabilistic. The aim and power inputs you provide is multiplied by numerous player stat values, situation variables, and random number generation to decide the outcome of the shot. While skill is important over the course of a game, you have limited control over the success rate of individual actions. Since you control one player at a time, AI assistance is needed to control the other players, further limiting your influence. For this reason, it's common to see close games decided by chance. In Rocket League, things are different. You don't control an agent who controls the ball. There is no intermediary, just the car and the ball. The only way to influence the ball is by the precise angle and speed you drive into it with. No press X to shoot, just the controls that drive the car. The lack of automated assistance makes Rocket League an exceptionally challenging game to master. For beginners, just hitting the ball can be a challenge, though they still have a lot of fun trying. Turn left. Turn left. I don't know how to turn left. With the left stick. I'm <laughs> <laughs> In sports games, dribbling is automatic. The ball sticks to the agent. The only input needed is direction and optional trick moves achieved by pressing specific button combinations. For Rocket League, the lack of assisting interaction between ball and car makes even basic dribbling very challenging to learn. While pros make it look effortless, simply balancing the ball on top of the car is far beyond the capabilities of beginners, requiring hundreds of hours of practice to master.
I don't bring this up to criticise sports games. Their goal is to simulate the experience of professional sports competitions, rather than simulating playing the sport itself, which would be almost impossible to achieve through a controller given the complexity of human movement. I bring it up to illustrate how unique Rocket League is as a game and what makes it so special. Oh, guys, take a break. Oh, the physics of Rocket League are entirely deterministic, meaning there are no randomised calculations to determine how the cars or ball behave. In other words, the physics of Rocket League are entirely predictable. This matters because while the ball may appear to spill out in random angles from a 50-50, there is actually nothing random about it. Given known inputs, you could predict with pixel precision where the ball would end up 10 seconds later, 100% of the time. This is uncommon for a competitive esport, where stat values, firing patterns, critical hits typically rely on random number generation, chance events that influence the outcome of games. In Rocket League, hitting or missing your shot isn't due to chance. It's entirely down to the inputs you made. With that said, outside of the physics engine, there are two sources of random behavior to be aware of in Rocket League. Kickoff starting positions and demolition respawn locations. Generally, Rocket League physics follows classic Newtonian mechanics, though elements such as demolition physics are designed to improve playability and the cars defy our current engineering capabilities. There are also some less obvious quirks, but the details of those are best saved for another video. Senzo to Ahmad. Oh my days! To understand the mechanics you see the pros use, we need to take a look at how the vehicles can move. For driving, acceleration, braking and turning all behave pretty much how you'd expect. The cars have incredible grip, but it's possible to brake traction of the rear wheels using the handbrake, which can be used to start a power slide, enabling faster changes of directions at low speeds. While arenas have different surfaces, it's only cosmetic and doesn't influence grip. Unlike most cars, the vehicles also generate constant downforce under acceleration, allowing them to drive on the walls. An unusual feature of the game is that the cars can jump and flip. While it may seem weird, the game wouldn't be the same without it. Like a lot of games, Rocket League permits a double jump, allowing roughly one and a half seconds to use the second jump or flip. The flip is a very useful mechanic because it generates a significant acceleration spike that can be used to move faster or hit the ball with more power. It's possible to flip in multiple directions, but all flips cancel vertical momentum, forcing the car to briefly travel parallel to the ground. There are many ways flips are used in game, and some are probably yet to be discovered, but we'll see more about that in the next video. The other unusual feature of Rocket League is, well, rockets. The rockets provide a high degree of thrust in whatever direction the car is facing. By angling the car back and jumping, the rockets provide enough thrust to propel the car into the air. While the rocket is the only source of directional thrust, it's possible to rotate the car on the three axes of pitch, yaw and roll, similar to how spacecraft can rotate themselves using cold gas thrusters while relying on the main rocket for propulsion. Flying through the air in Rocket League is called an aerial. While getting into the air is relatively easy, even for new players, Learning to control an aerial takes hundreds if not thousands of hours to perfect. Now you understand the rules for car movement, we can see how they're used to actually control the ball. But first, there are a few more common misconceptions about the physics to clear up. Wow, oh. that was so pretty. <laughs> Squishy. Beautiful. While there's a huge variety in the appearance of cars, each car has one of six hitboxes that determine how the car behaves. Each hitbox shares the same basic values for acceleration, speed, etc. But as the name suggests, they all vary slightly by the shape. A hitbox simulates the physical interaction between solid objects. The different car shapes and features, such as scoops, wings and uh, those, would create weird interactions. 
Rocket League simplifies this. Each car has a basic cuboid model for contact. The wheels and suspension are also modelled on the bottom of the hitbox, so hitting the ball with the wheels absorbs some of the power. The difference is small, though generally short tall cars help with dribbling control, while long flat cars are favoured for consistent powerful hits. The hitbox also has an effect on the car's handling. The Octane, Dominus and Fennec are currently the most popular pro car choices, although the Octane and Fennec are mechanically the same, since they share a hitbox type. Either. Oh my goodness, Astral, stop it! Just stop! Rocket League doesn't simulate air resistance. That means the ball doesn't slow down unless it's rolling, and the supersonic speed limit of the cars doesn't apply to the ball. Spin affects how the ball bounces on a surface, but without air resistance, that spin doesn't generate a Magnus effect. It was a common belief in the Rocket League community that the spin does curve the ball, and from watching, you may believe that too. However, this is an optical illusion created from a combination of the ball's parabolic trajectory, parallax, and field of view distortion. This can be seen by looking at the replay of a curved shot from a direct line of sight and has been confirmed by the game files. Now that you know more about the physics in Rocket League, we're ready to look at how the pros utilise mechanics that push the boundaries of what's possible. It's common to hear analysts talk about the player's mechanics. As I said in the last video, a player's mechanics is their ability to translate the idea of what they want to do into reality through the control of their car. For the sake of simplicity, going forward, we're going to describe mechanics as falling into three categories. Fundamental, flashy, and freestyle. These aren't concrete terms, more of a useful way to think about mechanics. In the next video, we're going to look at the most important category of mechanics, the fundamentals that make up over 90% of the game you see. From wave dashes and flicks, to power shots and aerials, it's time to look at the mechanics of Rocket League.